Hey math students, today I want to address a really common question I get from my calculus students when we're talking about implicit differentiation. Where does the dy dx come from? So this semester I had already introduced implicit differentiation in my first semester calculus class, actually with a brand new video this time around, and we were solving problems in class when I got exactly that question again. And of course this was already addressed in my video, but it's a notoriously tricky idea. Even my student tutor, who by the way is an excellent student and just won first place in a math research poster contest last fall, he told me he didn't get the dy dx thing until he was in calculus too. So I want to illustrate this clearly with a couple examples and here's the main point you should take away at the end. Yeah, implicit differentiation looks really weird, but it's really just the chain rule. So in our first example, we aren't even using implicit differentiation. It's just a chain rule reminder. I just want the derivative of x squared plus 3x all raised to the third power. And remember, the chain rule says to differentiate with respect to the interior function first. In other words, we're going to treat the x squared plus 3x as just a single variable quantity temporarily. So we differentiate with respect to the x squared plus 3x, treating it as a single variable. And we apply the power rule here and we just get three times that variable, three times x squared plus 3x squared. Then we're going to tack on the derivative of the interior function with respect to x. So that happens to be 2x plus 3. And we can clean it up a little by moving the 2x plus 3 out in front with that 3. So I have 3 times 2x plus 3 times x squared plus 3x all squared. Now check out this next example. Suppose I tell you that y is some unknown function of x, and then I ask you to take the x derivative of y cubed. Well, we're just going to use the chain rule again. This time the inner function is y, and again, that's just some unknown function of x, and we start by differentiating with respect to that inner function. In other words, we just differentiate with respect to y to start things out here. So again, I just apply the power rule and I get 3y squared. Then the chain rule says we have to tack on the derivative of y with respect to x, which we write as dy dx. And by the way, that's the same thing as y prime of x if you're more comfortable with the prime notation. So if you believe the chain rule, then you've already got this. When y is the interior function, then the chain rule just produces a factor of the derivative of the interior function, which is dy dx. Now, just to wrap it up, here's a reminder of why we care about implicit differentiation. We're given the implicitly defined curve xy squared plus 2y equals 4, and we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line at the point 2, 1 that you can see labeled in the plot. So to approach this problem with implicit differentiation, all we have to do is differentiate both sides with respect to x. So I want to take the x derivative of the left-hand side, so d dx of xy squared plus 2y. And on the right-hand side, I have the x derivative of the constant 4, which of course is going to produce a 0. And now we get to the interesting part. I have to take the x derivative of this implicit function that has x's and y's in it. And remember, that y is some function that depends on x. The fact that they're tangled up together in a single equation means the y depends on x. So when I apply the derivative to this first term, I actually have a product of two functions that depend on x. One of them is x, the other one is y squared. So we have to use the product rule here. So in my first term, I take the derivative of the x, which is just 1, times the y squared left alone. And then in my second term, I leave the x alone and multiply by the derivative of y squared with respect to x. So I start with the derivative with respect to y. That's just 2y. And then I tack on the derivative of the interior function. That's dy dx. Now this 2y over here is the simpler part. To take the x derivative of 2y, I just get 2 times the derivative of y with respect to x, which again is just dy dx. And on the right hand side, we have a zero. Now the point here is to isolate dy dx because the geometric interpretation of that is that it's the slope of this curve. So what I'm going to do is take these two terms that contain dy dx and factor the dy dx out. So I end up with dy dx times x times 2y or 2xy plus 2. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract this term from both sides. So subtract y squared from both sides. 
and I get a negative y squared on the right hand side. And now we can isolate dy dx as a function of x and y. So I end up with a negative y squared divided by 2xy plus 2. So now if we sub in the x and y coordinates of a particular point on this implicit curve, we automatically get the slope. And what we're interested in in particular is the slope, or dy dx, evaluated at the point 2, 1. So we're going to sub in x equals 2 and y equals 1. That gives us a negative 1 in the numerator, just replacing y with 1 there. And then in the denominator, I have a 2 times 2 times 1 for this first piece, replacing x with 2 and y with 1, and then a 2 added to that. So in that denominator, I have a 4 plus 2 or a 6. So this cleans up to negative 1 6 for the slope of the curve at the point that we've highlighted here in the graph. Now finally, I want to get the equation of the tangent line. So I'm going to use the point slope formula for this. y minus the known y point is equal to the slope, that's negative 1 6, times the quantity x minus the known x point. And I normally write my tangent lines in slope intercept form, which means just expand the right hand side and solve for y. So y is equal to negative 1 6 x. And then when I distribute the negative 1 6 to the negative 2, that gives me positive 2 6, which is 1 third. But then when I add 1 to that, which is 3 thirds, I get 4 thirds. So there's our final answer for the tangent line y equals negative 1 6 x plus 4 thirds. And these problems are great because you can always just verify your answer graphically. And there we have it. The tangent line touches at exactly one point. That's the point we were given, 2 comma 1. So I hope this video helped you get a better grip on implicit differentiation. Remember that dy dx is really just the chain rule taking the derivative of the interior function.